Hi everybody, Professor Wells here. So we've been taking a look at Russian suprematism and we've already met Malievich or Malevich. Um, the other major artist in that art movement is L. Lisitsky. I'll show you that name in the PowerPoint. Uh, this is an artist who was more well-traveled um, and that helped hone his skills, particularly in the realm of drafts, drafting, engineering, and architecture as well. We'll see that um, manifest in his art in a variety of ways. So he's not only a painter, um, but he also um, is an early artist working in um, creating installations of his art. Uh, that's something we'll talk about more in this class when we get into uh, the 70s and 80s, um, and also a photographer. So without further ado, let's pivot to the PowerPoint and take a look at some examples of his work. All right, adjusting my window here. All right, our first example is um, by this artist, El Lisitsky, um, working in Russian suprematism. Um, it's called Pro Un um, 99 from 1924 to 1925, using water soluble and metallic paint on wood. So what we find here is a work of art um, that really reflects um, his early training. As I mentioned, he was uh, an artist who traveled. He spent some time in Germany where he studied architecture and engineering. He knew Marc Chagall, a painter we met in the past. And since both were deeply invested in their Russian Jewish heritage, uh, Chagall offered El Lisitsky a faculty job at the art school he led back in Russia. There, through that academic appointment, El Lisitsky met Malievich or Malevich, and the rest is history. He's an artist with a strong background in form and technical skills in drafting, inspired by another non-objective artist, Malevich, who takes the reduction of monochromatic elements to their most immaterial but dynamic and expansive of interpretations. While seeing this reduced geometric vocabulary as a means of describing the purity of the utopian society that they were striving for in this post-Russian revolutionary period. So you can see in this particular example um, how much like uh, Picasso's work with cubism, there is a de-emphasis on color, a more monochromatic palette, um, and forms that appear flat, um, reflecting the two-dimensional surface um, of the painting, but also the drafting skills, um, whether the sort of the triangular grid down below or the cube-shaped form that seems to be floating in space that suggests an illusion of three-dimensional form. According to the Yale Art Gallery, where this painting resides in New Haven, Connecticut, through, quote, through constructing a complex dimensional space that hovers between the coherent and the impossible, El Lisitsky strives to evoke utopia, literally no place, and to achieve the task of inventing a new art for a post-revolutionary Soviet society. El Lisitsky called these paintings and artworks, which is a mix of these two-dimensional and illusion of a three-dimensional forms, pro-uns, uh, which may be an acronym for the project for the affirmation of the new in Russian. You don't need to know the um, acronym interpretation, just keep in mind that word pro-un or pro-un. Let's take a look at Elisitsky as he creates installation art. All right, let's begin on the upper left. Uh, this is called Pro Unen Raum or Pro Un Room, and it was created in Berlin, in Germany, for the Great Berlin Art Exhibition in 1923. This is a reconstruction of what it looked like, um, made in the 60s primarily made of wood and paint. 
So unlike Malevich, Lisitsky traveled, as I've mentioned, bringing to Germany the new Russian avant-garde styles of both suprematism and the next one we'll meet soon, constructivism. For an exhibition in this Berlin location, he created an installation in a room filled with reliefs made of wood, again, with a strong emphasis on geometric form and line in this signature monochromatic palette. The idea is you would enter this small space in a counterclockwise direction. He envisioned the experience as one where all the elements would appear to float, dissolve the walls with his prounes, becoming the active elements in that space, transporting you essentially to a different realm and perhaps this new place akin to the restructured society sought in this post Russian revolutionary period. And again, I think it's an interesting thing to think about in this period of the early 20th century with the rise of physics, the idea of things made up of atoms, um, elements that um, sometimes are seen by the eye, some that can't be seen, but this whole idea of different realms, different ways of organizing materials um, certainly seems to um, inform the thinking of um, artists like Elsa Lisitsky as well. Finally, let's take a look at the fun image down below. This is a self-portrait of the artist called The Constructor, parentheses self-portrait from 1924. A gelatin silver print basically is the technical process for this black and white photograph. I think it's a, an interesting um, photograph because it really pays tribute to who he was. Uh, not only was El Lisitsky an architect and painter, but also a photographer. Here he used double exposure process to showcase the technical tools and vocabulary of an architect. His round head echoed by the round form behind him, kind of a mashup of cubism and suprematism. Wouldn't you agree? All right, and of course, surrounded by the tools of the trade, like um, graph paper um, and various measuring instruments. Thank you for joining me.